What is going on everybody? So today I'm doing a video on a tank that was running on a canister filter for multiple years. And then we actually got a call because we got some very bad news. That aquarium, which was a 55 gallon aquarium, sprung a leak and the customer woke up and there was water spurting out of the side of the aquarium. So we had to act fast and we had to convert uh, the client's 55 gallon aquarium to a 75 gallon aquarium and do the whole setup over. It was a whole thing and there was a lot going on and we were really, really nervous because we wanted to save the fish and the coral and all that stuff. So we're gonna go now and I'm gonna take you to what the aquarium looks like now after all the stress and everything that we uh, had to go through. But first, check this out. But I just had to show you the twins here. These guys are green spotted puffers. Now I know a lot of people think green spotted puffers are freshwater fish. Um, but as they get bigger, they venture off into more brackish water and even, even fully salt. These ones are fully salt. They're at 35 parts per thousand and they've been there for a long time. As they get bigger, their dietary needs change and they end up venturing into uh, more salt water. Um, but these two have been doing great and how can you not like love green spotted puffers? Like look at that face. Everything about them is just so cool. Such an inquisitive fish. But I'm really excited about these because we're keeping them together. The twins are staying together and they are going into a cylinder tank, which I have not shown you guys yet. And I really cannot wait to make the video on that, but I'll definitely will when we rehome these guys. Wait till you see this tank. You're going to be, you're going to be loving it. They are eating clams and blood worms right now. That seems to be their favorite, but we also feed them a mix of shrimp and some other things. But I just had to share these two beautiful fish with you because you can tell, look how happy they are when they have that vibrant green right there on the top of their forehead when that is shining bright green that's when you know they're excited and then on the opposite on the opposite part of the spectrum we have these little baby canary blennies which are unbelievable fish these are aquacultured which means they're bred uh in-house they are not from the wild and you can see the little fat bellies in there these guys have been an absolute winner for us people love them they're a great uh, community tank fish um, and I just, especially in, in reef tanks, because they had that, uh, reef tanks run heavy blue lights, that yellow cuts through beautifully. And they're an, ex an inquisitive fish. They stay out into the water column. Customers love these fish and I'm glad, uh, that they're here. And I'm glad that we're going to continue to uh, get these guys because I think they make a great community reef fish. Other than that, we're pretty low here at Tank Nations on fish because we're doing a bit of remodeling here and we're sanitizing and wiping everything down. So uh, new year, kind of doing some house cleaning. But pretty soon here, once everything is up and, and we get everything set up here, we're going to get a huge fish shipment in and we'll be restocked uh, by the end of the month. So I'm really excited about that. But without any more delay, let's go ahead to the customer's house and uh, let me show you the... Uh, 75 gallon tank that's running on a canister filter and let's take a look can you do this reef thing on a canister filter especially after what happened with the with the tank leak and everything what died what 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 didn't die let's check it out all right so here is the aquarium 75 gallon tank that you see at most pet smart and pet co's uh, pretty standard stuff right here pretty standard setup and now this is set up and sold as a freshwater tank but you can obviously convert it to salt water um, by adding a canister filter. Um, now, let's just kind of go through what we have here. So if you guys see my video before with the canister filter tank, it was a 55 gallon tank that she used to have, but it's... So because we had the big travesty with the tank exploding and all that stuff, um, thank God we were able to get here in time. Um, we, we upgraded to this aquarium. So it went from 55 gallon tank to a 75 gallon tank. Um, so a little bit more room for the fish, but I was, we were a bit worried about the transition, uh, moving everything so quickly, the sand, the rock, the corals, and all that stuff, that there would be a slight, um, you know, uh, possible ammonia spikes. Some of the things you might be dealing with would be like ammonia spikes or, you know, just throwing the ecology off of the whole aquarium. And it's a lot of stress on the fish as well. But luckily, uh, we were able to use the majority of the water. When we did the switch, we did not change the canister filter. We kept all that good bacteria that was in the previous canister filter to be able to seed the tank. And I mean, it looks amazing. The corals look great. So you got your pally zooming great. And, and this also gave us a chance to kind of re the tank too. We've isolated the pulsing Xenia over to the side right here. And they are pulsing, so they're doing good. So we have them on a rock, keep them managed. We got the pallies over here on a rock by themselves, keeping them managed. Mushroom has a whole area to itself. So 
some more pallies over here on the sand bed. And now there is a couple of zinnias over here that snuck through, but no big deal picking those off. But look at, look at all this real estate now that we have to be able to put new coral. And then we have this giant cabbage coral right here. One of my favorite beginner corals. That, that's just such a cool, you know, that's one of my favorite corals just in general. I just love the color on them and I love how they grow and I think they're unique looking. I love that neon green. And then we have some hammers over here that are recovering nicely. And then the anemones here in the back. So we gave ourselves a little buffer zone here between the hammers and the anemones. And we're going to keep an eye on that because uh, if you remember last time, like we just want to make sure that they don't come in contact. Uh, we don't want to lose those hammers for sure. And then we have a little flame scallop under here, a little scallop hiding underneath, the, underneath that rock, which has survived the move, which is surprising because these guys can be incredibly delicate. Even little inverts survive the transfer as well. Clownfish are still being hosted by the anemone. You got the female over there and the male over there, which is really cool. I, I love that. I love how they both got their own anemone. That's pretty cool. And the sand is bright white, super clean. The water's really clear, hardly any algae on the on the tank. In the tank, the rocks are clear, the glass is clear. Now, the one thing I want to point out though is things are a bit stagnant in here. So what we did is we went ahead and ordered a wave maker to add a little bit more flow to the tank so I'll be installing that today and we do have the old canister filter that was on this tank before and that is because we wanted to keep a lot of that biological filtration in the aquarium because you know moving a whole tank and starting kind of almost over can create a lot of problems so we didn't want to start with a brand new canister filter you wanted to use the old one until the tank got seated but by the looks of it you know Everything looks really, really good. And I think we're where we need to be. It's been probably about a month and a half. So I think we're safe to, um, you know, maybe down the road, upgrade this canister filter, something a little bit more appropriate sized. But we you know, we come here like once a month and we do a pretty good water change. And we monitor the water chemistry. So uh, this tank might be able to be fine with this canister filter for uh, quite some time. There's no really need to rush and buy a, a, a bigger one especially because we're gonna be adding more flow to the tank today. And as long as we're doing our regular husbandry and maintenance, should be fine. Hopefully the customer didn't have to buy an extra light. Uh, the two primes are still plenty for this aquarium, especially for the types of corals that uh, they have. So that's a big advantage too, is not having to spend another, you know, 200 plus dollars on a light that this was still able to work. I also like that we have the strip posted up here, so it's easier access than, than um, it was before. So we're able to get to the plugs easier and it allows me to get to the canister filter a lot easier as well. So I got this little canister filter outside and it's crazy because the Ampipods love it in here. Look how dirty this thing is though. It hasn't been changed in about a month and a half just because we wanted to, like I said, we wanted to keep all that good bio filtration, but I think it's safe to change it now. But there's tons of pods in here, which is great for the aquarium, little Ampipods. But also, um, it's kind of cool how they, you know, they feed on all the detritus and things like that. So before we leave, I just wanted to point out that we added that additional power head and that is creating a lot more flow in the tank. And you can see now that the anemones are moving nice, a lot of flow moving through the hammer coral. Can even see here that the uh, cabbage coral is getting peeled up a little bit from the flow, but it's nothing too aggressive. I think the corals will adjust. They definitely need it. I have it on a um, else mode, or excuse me, I have it on the pulse mode, so it's kind of pulsing. So you get big spurts and then it draws back, and then big spurts and then it draws back. And I have it on the lowest setting right now because this is a pretty powerful uh, wave maker. And you can see the mushroom right here has got to get used to it too. But this is going to keep things circulated in the aquarium. And then look, we don't have any more of that funk that was up on the top. See that? All that stuff is now getting broken up. Look at that flow. Beautiful. I'd love to see it. And then that yucky oil slick on top, all that protein collected on top. That's not there anymore. So we're going to start off slow on the very first setting here and let the tank get adjusted to it. 
and then next time I get here, I possibly might turn it up again. But then now we'll be able to add a lot more uh, variety of corals, corals that need a lot more flow, and this tank is no longer stagnant. But yeah, this is a tank running on a small, small, small canister filter. Look how small that canister filter is. But it's got one, two, three power heads, that one being the big daddy of them all. And it's, it's running great, and the corals look awesome. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one.